Well, some of the lawmakers on the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee are saying they saw evidence this week that IRS efforts to target conservative groups is directly tied to higher-ups appointed by the White House. This after a former IRS official testifies that contrary to earlier claims that low-level agents were to blame, it was the IRS chief counsel who had a direct hand in the targeting scandal. Joining us now, one of the members of the Oversight Committee, South Carolina Congressman Trey Gowdy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, ma'am. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, so now you have a former IRS tax law specialist who goes on the record saying that the IRS Office of Chief Counsel, appointed by the president, was involved in the widespread targeting of conservative groups. This flies in the face of claims that it was two rogue IRS agents who should be blamed for the scandal. What impact does this have now? Well, it means that all six of the defenses so far used by our colleagues on the other side of the aisle in defense of this administration have collapsed. I've counted six defenses. One of the defenses was this was two rogue agents in Ohio. And, and by the way, Uma, that was a defense that was furthered in advance by none other than Jay Carney, who repeated that false defense. So what we know is that this was not confined to Ohio, that D.C. IRS office's fingerprints are all over it. One of the two political appointees, there are only two political appointees at the IRS. One of the two is the Office of Chief Counsel. Ume, this is what's important to keep in mind. We've had political activity around in this country since before the founding. 50% means what 50% has always meant. So why the different analysis for conservative groups starting in 2010? Well, why this new metric for evaluating 501c4 organizations that are conservative the analysis is the same. It's always been political activity more than 50 percent. Why does it need to go to the office of, of chief counsel in D.C. to approve these applications? And some of the approval processes have taken years. You know, one of those so-called rogue agents this week testified and says she was just following orders from Washington. This was the news that came out of the hearing this week. What does it mean if the legal counsel of the IRS was in charge of this targeting scheme? Well, it means, again, that we can't believe much that comes, uh, unfortunately, uh, from the spokesperson uh, for the president, who, who, again, repeated that this was a rogue operation in Ohio. Uh, we can't believe that defense. Uh, we also shouldn't believe the other defenses that progressive groups were targeted as well. Uh, I've never really understood that defense, that because we're going to act improperly towards more than one group, that's a defense. Uh, what it means is what we were told initially is demonstrably false, that this was not confined to Ohio, that it's got Washington's fingerprints all over it. And uh, so we need to be careful uh, going forward that, that, that we view whatever we're told uh, from this administration uh, with a jaundiced eye. Well, you know, this week at the hearing, fireworks were erupting with Democrats like Elijah Cummings saying that Republicans on this committee are trying hard to infer that the president's White House was directly involved in the scandal and it wants it stopped. Do you have any direct evidence at this time of White House involvement? Well, let me say at the outset, uh, Uma, I, I like Elijah Cummings very much personally, but, but the last time I checked, Jay Carney works for the White House. So uh, you can't have it both ways. You, you, you can't say the White House wasn't involved when the spokesperson for the leader of the free world is perpetuating a myth that these were two rogue agents in Ohio. How do you square that, that the White House isn't involved when the spokesperson for the White House, Jay Carney, is advancing a demonstrably false narrative? Uh, step back for just a second. Is that the new defense in this town, that the president himself was not directly involved? Nobody's alleged that. Nobody's alleged that President Obama was involved. But, but if that's the new standard for propriety, that as long as the president himself was not orchestrating something, that there's no harm there, Jay Carney works for him. Jay Carney took it upon himself to advance this false narrative, and the notion that you can now claim the White House wasn't involved is, is just balderdash. It's, it's false. It's wrong. I would use another word, but the FCC would get involved. It's just wrong. Congressman Trey Gowdy, thank you so much for your remarks. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am.